Hello guys and welcome to this video about non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. So non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs are one of the most prescribed and used drugs in the world. And I'm going to talk about the uses of these drugs, then I'm going to explain the mechanism of action, then give you some examples and finally talk about the adverse effects. So the uses of, of nasides are they used in inflammation, as the name implies, and also they used for pain, and may be used for mild antipyretic effect, and has been used to inhibit pole formation in familial adenotus polyposis, and finally, the long-term use reduce the risk of colon cancer through unknown mechanism. So now I'm going to explain the mechanism of action. So, nasides have anti-inflammatory activity that is chiefly mediated by inhibition of prostaglandin biosynthesis. And this is achieved by the inhibition of cyclooxygenase enzyme. So, to clarify this more for you, the inflammation starts with the stimulus, which leads to disturbance in the cell membrane. And when the cell membrane gets disturbed, it releases arachidonic acid. When arachidonic acid is released, it either, for, it either converted to leukotrienes by lipoxygenase enzyme or to prostaglandins by uh, cyclooxygenase enzyme. So the nasides work on the cyclooxygenase enzyme, they inhibit that enzyme, so they inhibit the inflammation at this point. I explain this even more in my video linked in the description below. The other point I want to talk about is that there is non-selective nasides and those work by inhibiting COX-1 and COX-2 and there's the new agents which are selective for inhibiting COX-2 only. Now I'm going to explain the cyclooxygenase enzyme 1 and 2. So the cyclooxygenase enzyme 1 regulates normal cellular processes such as gastric cytoprotection, vascular hemostasis, platelet aggregation and reproductive and kidney functions. While the cyclooxygenase enzyme 2 is expressed in tissues such as the brain, kidney, and bone. And its expression at other sites is increased during states of chronic inflammation. So inhibition of COX-2 is thought to lead to the anti-inflammatory and analgesic action of nasides, while inhibition of COX-1 leads to most of the side effects. So uh, because of this, they synthesized COX-2 selective nasides, which had the same efficacy to reduce pain and inflammation as it for the non-selective nasides and had improved GIT safety and reduced risk of bleeding. But these drugs had increased in incidence of edema, hypertension, and possibly myocardial infarction, which made their use limited. Now I'm going to ex give you some examples about nasides. So the non-selective ones, the aspirin, diclofenac, ibuprofen, naproxen, mefenamic acid, endomethacin, ketoprofen, piroxicam. And the selective ones include siloxicib and meloxicam. So one important note I want to point to is that the aspirin irreversibly inhibit COX-1 and COX-2 while all the other nasides are reversible, have res reversible inhibition mechanism. So finally, I want to talk about the adverse effects of these drugs, and these include the gastrointestinal, which are the most common adverse effects of nasides, and they range from dyspepsia to bleeding, and they norm so normally, production of prostaglandin I2 inhibit gastric acid secretion, while production of prostaglandin E2 and F2 alpha stimulates synthesis of protective mucus in both the stomach and small intestine. So agents that inhibit COX-1, which are all nasides except the COX-2 selective ones, lead to GIT risk, because they inhibit these prostaglandins, and as a result, there is less, less protective mucus and more acid secreted. The second adverse effect is the increased risk of bleeding. Uh, and uh, so thromboxane A2 
enhances the platelet aggregation. But aspirin reversibly inhibits COX-1 mediated the thromboxane A2 th formation, uh, while other nasides reversibly inhibits the production of thromboxane A2. So aspirin effect continues for the lifetime of the platelet since it does not, does not have a nucleus, so it cannot produce more thromboxane. While COX-2 selective nasides have less antiplatelet aggregation effect since it re it's related to COX-1. Now, actions on, ki on the kidney, so nesites prevent the synthesis of prostaglandin E2 and prostaglandin I2 that are responsible for maintaining renal blood flow, uh, so it can cause retention of sodium and water and can cause edema in some patients. Patients with heart failure or kidney disease are at higher risk. Now the cardiac effects of nasides, uh, so agents such as aspirin with very high degree of COX-1 selectivity have shown a cardiovascular protective effect thought to be due to a reduction in the production of, thrombox, of thromboxane A2. Agents with higher rel relative COX-2 selectivity have been associated with an increased risk for cardiovascular events like an, uh, an, uh, a myocardial infarction and a stroke possibly by decreasing prostaglandin I2 production mediated by COX-2. So the drugs interactions. So nasides is roughly 80% to 90% plasma protein bound to albumin and can be displaced from protein binding sites resulting in an increased concentration of free nasides. Alternatively, nasides can displace other highly protein bound drugs such as warfarin, phenytoin or valproic acid, resulting in higher free concentration of these agents. So finally, I want to talk about the toxicity. So NSAIDs intoxication may be mild to severe. The mild form is called salicylism and is characterized by nausea, vomiting, market hyperventilation, headache, mental confusion, dizziness, and tinnitus. When large doses of nasides are administered, severe nasides intoxication may result. So restlessness, delirium, hallucinations, convulsions, coma, respiratory and metabolic acidosis, and death from respiratory failure may occur at uh, a large doses of nasides. Uh, one point I want to mention here that children are particularly prone to nasides intox intoxication. Ingestion of as little as 10 grams of aspirin can cause death in children. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. It helps me a lot. If you have any questions, comment down below.